Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1969. We're going to be taking a look at the Hollies and they're going to be playing through Carrie Ann. So let's get the guys up on screen and see how they get on. jump in here because the Hollies, one of those classic bands from the 60s where I think it was a given that if you did play an instrument, if you were in a band in the 60s, you had to be able to sing as well. And these guys, especially in this performance, are a great example of being able to supply a great live vocal, harmonize with each other. And by the way, when this was originally released, it was done in two takes in the studio. I think the first take was a bit of a full start, but then the second take was then put on the record, just straight onto the record. So it gives you an idea of the quality of the bands around at the time, the talent level that was required in order to be a professional musician, but also to be favored above other bands at the time because it just literally was how good you were determined whether you were signed or not because if you couldn't do it in one or two takes in the studio it would cost the label too much to spend money on you as a band. They'll get another band who are more talented in to then do it in one take. And just while we've got Terry Sylvester in shot here, quick shout out to his vocal solidity live, as we can hear in this performance, his vocal ability and just being able to fill the shoes or that void that was left by Graham Nash when he left the band. And Graham and Alan Clark, lead singer in this video, if you don't know who the guys are, they were the original members in terms of founding the band in the first place. And when they first started, it was more of a guitar and vocal group, very much in the mold of the Everly Brothers, but then it progressed into a full band setup, as we can see here. And something that I mention in a lot of videos that is prevalent in this video as well, the solidity of that rhythm section. And a quick shout out to Bobby Elliott here, who's laying down such a straightforward, but solid rhythm on those drums. That means that Bernie Calvert can just sit in in there they're both in the pocket this track is so solid the whole way through rhythmically so having that solidity in the back line means that the melody can sit on top of that and can be the focus because when you've got great vocalists like we have here and three-part harmonies the last thing you want is to be focused on a drummer that's slightly out or might be pushing the tempo or the fills might not be quite there or the bassist is a little bit sloppy and behind the beat 
you just want to listen in to the quality of the vocals, which you can hear. We're not distracted at any point. And that's the beauty of having a solid rhythm section and also vocally Tony Hicks, really important part of that three part harmony. And the fact that he's playing rhythm guitar as well. I always say singing and playing at the same time doubles the difficulty. You can throw Bernie in with that as well because he's playing and singing too. And then we have that solid lead vocal, the standalone lead vocal of Alan Clark with the expression that he puts in to his voice he's so solid live as we can hear but also what I like about the sound is that you can get those calls and responses from that main lead vocal but then the harmony lines that start at a different time and complement that original lead vocal it's a really clever way of exploring those melodic options that you get from having such great singers in the same band and having three great singers in the same band and just quickly about this track because it was originally released two years before for this because Graham Nash was a co-writer with Alan Clark and Tony Hicks and he was still in the band in 1967 and it's interesting because it was written about Marianne Faithful but Graham wasn't that confident or was a bit too shy to say that in the song so he changed it to Carrie Anne and by this time they'd had a lot of success in the UK and in the USA but that success in the USA took a bit of time to come about because they were first spotted in 1963 and that was was Ron Richards who spotted them at the Cavern Club where they were playing and Ron was a producer at Parlophone so he organized it for them to have an audition for Parlophone but the problem they had is that their lead guitarist called Vic Steele didn't want to be a professional musician and I think a lot of people must have dreams of being a professional musician and having that chance but it just wasn't for Vic so they replaced Vic with Tony Hicks as we can see Tony in this video so they got together and did that audition for Parlophone Records it obviously went well because they were taken on as artists and it went so well that the recording of the audition was released as their first single and in the audition they did two tracks one of them was Ain't That Just Like Me which was a cover of The Searchers track and that was the one that was released and it went to number 25 in the charts so following the success of that single, which was just their audition, they released another track and it was the Coasters again that they chose to cover. This time it was the Coasters track called Searching and that got to number 12 in the charts. So it did even better than their first release. And at this point, Don Rathbone, who was their drummer at the time, he decided to leave the band. And this is where Bobby Elliott then came in because Tony Hicks knew him from his previous band. And in early 1964, they did another Another cover of a track called Stay and this time it got to number 8 in the charts so it was their first top 10 hit here in the UK and that was taken from their album called Stay with the Hollies and that album got to number 2 in the album charts here but let's get back into the performance When the lesson's over you'll be with me Then I'll hear the great live performance that was and just vocally the quality and also the phrasing in order to keep all of those vocals really nice and tight when you've got three separate lines changing the notes at the same time is so important but also where you end each vocal phrase and making sure that you're all ending at the same time because that kind of thing is going to give you a really cool vocal tightness in exactly the same way that you have a tightness within the band instrumentally having that vocally has got to be so well rehearsed to pull it off at this kind of level and I just quickly want to mention the success that the Hollies had in 1966 with their track called Bus Stop because they hadn't had any success or at least hadn't charted in the top 10 in the US up until that point. This track got to number five and it also got to number five here in the UK. And it's interesting because Eric Hayduck, who was the bassist at the time, took a leave of absence just before Bus Stop was released and just before that success in the US. And that was because he thought that the management were taking 
taking too much of a cut. And it turned out in the future that he was right. But during this period, they then got Bernie Calvert to step in on bass. And Bernie was preferred to Eric because they had this success with Bus Stop. And Eric, when he came back, unfortunately was let go. So after the success of that single, they then released an album called Bus Stop, and that just included tracks that were recorded previously, but were never released. So that went out into the USA and got to number 75 in the album charts, and that was the first album that they had to break the top 100. So in 1966 and 1967, they were having success in the UK and the USA, and after that point, Graham Nash left, and it wasn't until 69 that they were back up towards the top of the chart and they released their cover of He Ain't Heavy, He's My Brother. That got to number three here in the UK and in 1970 it got to number seven in the USA. And the interesting thing about that track, have a little listen to that right channel because Elton John is playing the keys on that version of the track. But that track also got re-released here in the UK in 1988. It was part of a Miller Lite advert that we had here on TV and from that, it then got to number one again in the UK charts. The link to this original video is going to be in the description below, as always, so you can watch it the whole way through. I think there's seven tracks in all, so you can check those out without me interrupting them. Just to finish with, the Hollies were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2010, and these guys are one of the few bands that are still going. I mean, from that British invasion in the 1960s, I think pretty much the only other band still doing it are the Rolling Stones. So the Hollies are still out there and you can still catch a gig. But thank you so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you guys at the next one.